Hi guys, welcome to Captain German Exploring YouTube channel. Today we decide to make interview with our friends Sailing Foxes. The guys from Germany, uh, they're traveling around the world. They just started a trip. We made them first time in uh, Spain in Valencia. And now we met them at Martinique. So let's take a beer and uh, go to sailing boat Joanna, to Stefan and Bernie and speak with them and drink a beer a little bit and they will explain and uh, show us their perfect boat which is a, by the way X Yacht 412 so let's go like to introduce you my friends we met each other first time in Valencia in Spain and now okay. cool. Martinique Martinique right. we made it across the Atlantic <laughs> we made so it across the Atlantic did. yes and uh, we met uh, each other maybe one week ago here by the way the name of boat is John yes Joanna Joanna um, yes. Joanna so, so my name is Bernie I'm 29 years old and, um, well, about two years ago, we decided to go on a journey like this, so we got to say a boat. Why you decided to say this? Why? It is a too complicated life, so better to sit somewhere in the office. <laughs> Would have been yeah. easier, yeah? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm talking about the complicated life. We had a really complicated day to restock on fuel, diesel, water, everything is more complicated, but we decided to... It is like a groundhog day, every day like the same day, and a sailing boat. Of course, it's a cool life, but anyway, yeah. explaining this to people who work in from 9 to 5 every day, sometimes from uh, 8 to 11 p.m., <laughs> they uh, look at you and say like, Ah, it is a dream, but reality is a different, we know. But we people know. Who, <laughs> who don't know this, for them it's a little bit different life. Why you decide to change your life and uh, start sailing? Well, it was always a, a big dream to um, well, go explore and have the, the time that you want in a certain place. So very often when you go on vacation, you just fly for one week to some place. And you know, you have one week to do um, all the sightseeing in that place, and then the vacation is over and you're flying back home. And uh, living on a boat, traveling on a boat, gives you the, uh, the chance and the possibility to explore places with time. Uh, to meet locals, to meet guys like you, uh, that, we, that you see in, uh, in Valencia, and then okay. half a year later... Like me, yeah. Yes, and uh, <laughs> a lot of different cool sailors. Yeah. But maybe it is a more question to you. What do you think? Uh, it is a, it was a, some expectation before you start sailing and uh, the real life. How different it was and how different it is now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we always knew that it will be complicated in terms of how do I get fresh water. I always have to check the weather and then I cannot stay in one place on anchor because the swell is so bad and there are just... Well, we knew before that it won't be holiday. And it's not because you have the hard just, work. To, it's just you have different challenges, different problems. But in the end, it's just an incredible feeling to be on a journey like this. To see, like right now, the sunset behind the hills, and to enjoy a beautiful sunset every day, and then just and drinks. And <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Stefan, you have a very cool boat because uh, it is a X. Yes. Uh, it is a X forty one or four hundred twelve. So it's yeah. forty one foot 41. long. Yes. But it is a uh, kind of sport cruisers. Yes. Am I right? Yeah. 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 
why uh, this board? Because it is a not uh, like mass market board. It is a just you know a little bit few steps above. Yes. Why you decide to choose exactly this board and why not to go to the more cheaper option? Well, several reasons. Is uh, I learned uh, sailing on these boats and I know them as uh, very reliable, very robust boats that, that are built in a, in a very nice way. At the same time, they have a good performance and they're quite fast. And we had situations um, and with low wind where everybody else was going on the engine and we were passing other guys under sails. Uh, and, and we had, a, I remember, that was a big. Um, one of these mass market boats, 50, 54 foot boat, and he really pushed his engine with the big uh, black smoke coming out of the boat, and we were still faster on the sails. Yeah? And, uh, and this is uh, what you can do on a, on a X yacht, which you probably can't do on a on a one of these mass market boats, which are certainly a cheaper option. Yes. It was uh, your first uh, Atlantic uh, experience. It was my second Atlantic crossing. What what was your average speed in uh, exactly this boat uh, when you came? Oh, um, do you know? <laughs> I can't. Seven or eight? It. Yeah. Seven or eight knots, like something. Average. Like yeah, as an average. Yes. So <laughs> quite happy. And we and we didn't use our engine. Yeah, maybe crossing. maybe because you had uh, a wind on your way because we didn't. Yeah. At all, at all. So we yeah, use Calfway, uh, Ginecare and Calfway engine. Yeah. So how was your trip? And uh, from which point did you start and uh, to which point did you come? So we went, uh, we went down to the uh, Canary Islands uh, and um, left uh, from Gran Canaria. Which is um, with the Ark or by yourself? We went with the Ark, uh -huh, okay. and uh, was a well good option also to, to do um, uh, shopping and provisioning, etc. And from there we went uh, to Saint Lucia. Um, I mean, followed the, the route of the Ark, yeah. and uh, we, had, we had good winds. That uh, was a very exceptional Ark, um, very fast Ark. Uh, How many boats was it? Two hundred fifty boats in total. Uh, and uh, so uh, all the different divisions, uh, the monohulls, the catamarans, the racing division, etc. Whatever. And yeah, we had uh, we had um, trade winds um, basically from the beginning and then until we reached the uh, the Caribbean. And uh, because you asked me about the, the speed. Uh, probably we, we could have been even faster. Um, we didn't use our Jenica, we didn't use on a spin or a spinnaker. Just on the main, uh, just main, on the main and the Genoa. Uh, for the long passages, I, I rather prefer to be a bit conservative, not to break anything. Yeah, yeah. because and if the you're night, if you're to sleep, exactly yeah. <laughs> to sleep uh, in the night, uh, while when you are in a protected uh, bay like here, no wave, no wind, and you want to compete with other boats, then uh, it's of course nice to have the, the right performance. How many how many days uh, it takes to you to cross Atlantic? We had uh, 18 days 18. Uh, that it took us for the crossing. Is In it, some hours. 18 yeah. it is a quite good result because normally it's from 19 to 21, so it's average. So your result is a quite good. Yeah. Happy happy with that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, which advantage uh, advantages and the disadvantages to own board like this? Well, the, the, probably the biggest disadvantage is <laughs> to own a boat. <laughs> you, you have trouble. You, you pay a lot of money to have uh, trouble and thoughts that you didn't have before. So uh, that is the biggest uh, disadvantage of owning a boat. Um, Are you talking about advantages now? Yeah, advantages. <laughs> both, both way. <laughs> well, you're, you're living at home, uh, and uh, and you no, can. No, I mean, uh, it on, is a, a, on a ice. racer, on a yeah, yeah. yeah performance cruiser. Uh, well, biggest advantage is the, is the speed that you have, yeah. uh, and you have. Uh, um, I mean, it is a technical sailing um, with all the trim options. We have a proper uh, traveler, Cunningham, all those additional features that uh, a, a normal cruiser probably wouldn't have. Um, uh, we, we have here to do a fine trim of the sails and really get to the right performance level. The downside is we. We are relatively light in terms of, of 
weight. Uh, so we have uh, mm -hmm. 7.4 tons. Uh, it's very light. It's, it's, it's very, very light. light. Yeah. Um, it, it comes with that that we don't have too much uh, storage um, on the boat uh, because everything is a bit tiny and uh, also on the deck. I, I can stand, but I don't have a lot of headroom. But, uh, and, uh, about this, I, I think the better to show your boat, but it, it uh, could be a little bit later. Yeah. So, yeah. But, and uh, um, yeah, that is probably one of the disadvantages. Or when you entered our boat and came here into the cockpit, you said, oh, that, that's cozy. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is cozy for sailing. It's cool because you have very short distances and yeah, you can, you can feeling, handle feeling. all the lines uh, from, from one position. Uh, when you, I mean, if we compare it with your boat, sitting outside, you, you have a huge terrace in the garden. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, uh, backyard. <laughs> backyard. Yeah, backyard. Exactly, Let's go to yeah. backyard. <laughs> and this is something we don't have on the, on the 41 but, yeah. Uh, you have uh, something uh, different stuff, like for example uh, the main cell traveler. Yeah. I don't care, but I already bought it and I will install it. You will install it. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> you also get it. As yeah, a, but I will install nice, it. It's a nice hour. feature, of course, uh, for uh, for racing, for the performance, but uh, especially here in the Caribbean when you when you have the, the gusty winds and sometimes no, no, the yeah, wind yeah. picks it up and then you just, just put it to yeah. the leeward and take out the pressure. That that really helps. As yeah, a, it's a very nice security. feature also uh, for a cruising. Uh, it a is very a security. Nice feature, yeah. And that's what about the boat again you feel safe you feel you feel really safe on the boat so in a, uh, in terms of uh, woman uh, on a boat yeah how difficult it is uh, to live because I have many friends and uh, their wives and girlfriends all the time asked us uh, how it is how, how, how difficult it is to live uh, I mean uh, not like in a big house or apartment with all infrastructure around. It is a little bit different. About you, I understand. For men, it, it, it's okay just drinking water from a tap, you know. Water? Uh, fine. You drink water? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't care what? <laughs> so aesthetic. <Well>, uh, <laughs> so aesthetic. <laughs> but uh, about, what about you? How um, do you feel uh, or... Um, for example, for different people who just, you know, on a, on a balance to do or not to do. How uh, do you feel yourself, how comfortable do you feel yourself uh, when you live on a boat? I feel really comfortable because... But it's because of him? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the thing is, I love being on a boat because I love being close to water and... To, to be really close to water means a lot of freedom to me. It's, it's really relaxing. I just love to go sailing. Of course, there are a lot of challenges on a boat or to live on a boat like this. And I guess the biggest challenge for me is that we don't have so much fresh water. So we don't have a water maker. And okay, we... it's possible to solve the problem. So it is a just, you know, you can solve it and uh, don't it's feel a... you're uncomfortable. It is a maybe... It's an invest. Exactly, yeah, it's it an invest. Exactly yeah. in this time, yes. yes. But I mean, just if you look on this with uh, some perspective, you know, with uh, yeah. some, uh, you know, once ahead. Yes. So. I think it is a no big problem if you have it. So no, just it's, it's some not. small investment, or not yes. small, it's quite valuable investment, because <laughs> the water maker is a ducking yeah. expensive. So 5,000, 6,000 euros, yeah, uh, minimum, that's, yeah. I think. that's the starting point. Uh. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And sometimes talking about problems which are typical for women. I have very long hair. You and not, to, not yeah, being able it. to wash my hair regularly is a challenge. So on the Atlantic, I washed it maybe three times. And then after a couple of days... It Just was, lazy uh, and reaching. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, well, that's a challenge. It's, it's always... Um, there are always some difficult parts about this life. But in the end, it's absolutely amazing. I, I agree with you, but I just, it is a for people who just... But you don't have much sing. hair. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the chest. <laughs> just, uh, what did you do before you start sailing? What was your job before? Uh, I was in acoustics, mm -hmm. and um, I'm a musician. And, um, did I you play music or writing songs? 
more specific. Just can you yes. explain? So, um, also on this journey, I would like to combine my two passions. And the first passion is sailing and being out in the water. And the second passion is, yeah, composing music. And so I brought my little piano with me. I mean, ah. we have a small boat, but even if you have a small boat, I was allowed to bring my small So sometimes, piano. sometimes it's better to allow to do something. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So I, I need this just to sit down and to, I mean, with all these emotions linked to this journey, I try to to put all this together and create new pieces of music. So I compose soundtracks and I use the soundtracks for our movies and also to, for other small projects. And this this is what I love doing. Do you have your YouTube channel? Yes. They have YouTube channel. Yes, they have YouTube channel. It, it could be in a description of this video. Look here, and uh, you will find everything. Yes. So, uh, what is the name of your channel? The name of the channel is Sailing Foxes. Yeah. And my name as a musician is BernieFoxMusic.com. So uh -huh. That's um, the domain. We will provide that information in the video in the description as well. Yeah. Yes. So this is where you can find all the information and yes that's what I love doing. <laughs> yeah, what about you? Well I'm I'm an engineer. Uh, yeah. and, oh, it uh, is a very useful knowledge. It is. Oh, yes. It is very, very useful. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. uh, I worked in product development and. Uh, but yeah, so where, where did you from? Where? So I'm I'm from, uh, from well from Munich from Germany we're both yeah. from, uh, from Germany. Oh, we didn't uh, mention that in the beginning. Yeah. So um, it is a not last... only not only engineer it's very efficient. In <laughs> <laughs> last years last years uh, we lived in Munich so uh, in, the, in the south of Germany. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, of course having a technical understanding helps. In a boat, uh, yeah, yes. in a boat. Uh, it helps a lot. <laughs> Can you estimate if I decide uh, to buy a boat? like this plus min plus minus maybe three five years what's the range of prices uh, from a bottom to sky oh, I mean the um, range more or less it is uh, we don't need exact figures yeah just you know just for estimation um, my, you mean now this type of boat here or general to go cruising on no, a, no 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 this exactly this, on this type, type of boat yeah yeah uh, I don't know the, the, the cheapest uh, you I mean it, it was produced in, in on, over a quite uh, long range if I remember right the first boats uh, came into production in 1990 uh, and this one here was one of the last very very last ones to be produced in 2003. Yes. So it is a very long range, yeah? and but of course, I mean just plus minus yeah, and three the, years, and the, and like the, from 2000 to 2000. Well, the, the cheapest, the cheapest boats, and they are all identical. Uh, the no, cheapest it doesn't boats matter. It's just maybe with uh, different options. Uh, it is. It could be multiplied two, but anyway, yeah, the range. So, so the, the range of cheapest boats that you get as a uh, as these are starting at 60,000 euros. Yeah. Uh, but then you probably have to do a lot of investment if you want to go on cruising. Yeah. Uh, so it is a very cheap one, and uh, yeah, but they are worn out they they need a lot of maintenance and, and, yeah. and care and these are probably one of the first boats that were built uh, and then um, yeah, if we get to the upper range uh, 130 140 150 for very well maintained and uh, yeah it depends on how much equipment is in there yes of course yes it is a, and uh, it's also big difference which flag it is so if it is a European Union flag it is a one way because the tax is already paid if it is uh, some tax-free zone, it could be uh, minus 30-50% from it. So it is a very big difference in it. Yeah. Okay, let's... Uh, can you show, please, uh, maybe firstly from outside? From the outside? Yes, yeah, and uh, you explain about your cool stuff, what I love. <laughs> I already noticed some stuff which I would like to put a finger on it and say... Oh, when you want to have... <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's okay. go. <laughs> let's go. You have a, a high performance car can because in a low performance this part is a plastic like we have. Yeah. But you have a... Yeah, it's a aluminium. It's a, it's a very solid. We, we uh, had it uh, open and, and serviced it already a couple of times. Uh, and now it's, uh, the boat is 15 years old, the winters are 15 years old, but on the inside it still looks super, super good and super well maintained. Oh, I see. It, is it, a, needs, it, looks, it needs maintenance. Yeah. Huh? You need to, to do any something. Bot, any boat. Any boat needs maintenance, yeah. uh, but uh, these are super reliable. What I really like are the, are the jammers. 
uh, these type of jammers because very jammers, often yeah. uh, you have you need to open a jammer yeah. and, and keep it open this way yeah? and then you do something on the sail somebody steps on it breaks it uh -huh. now these type of jammers here you open and close it oh, and you have and it like little, a fuse yeah and the little red tap keeps it open yeah ah, and it is, but it, it so looks like exactly like a fuses yeah like a fuse and so you put it so you you put it on the winch and and you work with it and when you're done yeah you lock it and yeah, now it's locked huh. yeah, and i never that way, saw it before it's cool and yeah. in that way uh you nobody can step on the on the open handle and 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 break it uh, so yeah, but uh, is it convenient for you to keep all the ropes in the bags? Because I uh, replace it with uh, just hooks and I have it you can, here. You can do either way. Uh, oh, I, yeah, I yeah, prefer, but about you. I prefer here. the bags. Yeah. I did, uh, I, I exchanged many, many of the lines uh, with the state-of-the-art uh, ropes. Um, mm -hmm. Dyneema. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Dyneema is a good these one. These things, yeah. if you look... Um, it is expensive one, at least, yeah. This is one of the original ones, 14 millimeters. Uh -huh. uh, if, uh, excuse me. So, <laughs> <laughs> now, this one here is, uh, is our main halyard, uh, if you compare those two. Uh, um, um, the main two, 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 two times it's eight, halyard, that's eight millimeter yeah, and it has a higher brake load than yeah uh, because it's dynamo yeah 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 and it's dynamo and uh, with a thinner diameter it gives you the advantage that you have less friction and all of the the points where you deflect uh, line the deck organizer or uh, also the the sheaves at the, the, the pulley at the top of the mast yeah. yeah the thinner the rope is the less friction you but have uh, at least it is a more smooth if it is a diamet yes. diameter of the yes. rope is a yeah, small yeah. one so uh, yeah yeah. Okay, let's. And, oh, uh, you have, have a so big. We uh, have uh, yeah. the uh, the winches. Uh, so we have in total six winches. We have the one um, here. Man, six uh, winches. It is left. a very cool because I have four and it is a nightmare. So when you decide to remove a Geno and install and put the uh, Genoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those are not winches. Huh? Well, yeah. we, we have sufficient winches and uh, bright, uh, quite big ones. Uh, so the ones here for all the reefing lines, for the halyards, uh, etc. Then we have uh, one which is reserved for the uh, Genoa. Yep. Uh, where we will also run our uh, Genica sheets, and uh, the one at the at the rear is the uh, um, the main uh, sheet. Um, all of them are manual, yeah. No electric. All manual. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can argue uh, if it's nicer to have electrical or, or manual is. one, but, uh, but I all, all electrical, it's possible yeah, every, to use everything, a candle. <laughs> every, yeah, th that's true, uh, but everything uh, what is electrical can break. Yeah, and, but uh, you can um, continue to use your uh, candle well, for it. Uh, I said, is a, is a philosophy, yeah, but I've, mm -hmm. I've met many people uh, with electric winters uh, which broke things on the boat. Uh, because you don't have the feel for the load, uh, and uh, something is very. Is, I disagree with you just yeah. because uh, <laughs> if it is your boat, you, you probably need it very maybe, well. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, but well, so we are we are happy. We are happy with the manual ones. You have yeah. a so huge steering wheel. Yeah, that they. The is steering it co wheel. convenient? I never tried the to sail wheel. with it. No, the the nice thing is with the steering wheel. You can see you sit it on it somewhere here on the side. Uh, and, and cozy and relaxed, um, leaning back, uh, and you're steering just with one finger. That's yeah, because it, it is a big one. It's a big, it's a big wheel. Uh, we don't have, uh, we don't have um, a chain and cables. We have a solid uh, rod, like you have in the, in the car, your steering column, uh -huh. and that directly goes to the to the rudder, and it's a, it's a pre-balanced rudder, so you don't feel a big force of the rudder, and that makes it very, very. But anyway, the boat uh, was a serious X X boat for the rods, and it's a brand. Yeah. Yeah, so it is a, a high performance, so they exactly. are normally yeah. quite very well balanced. And, uh, yeah. yeah, and that is the, the disadvantage is if you're in an anchorage or like here in the Caribbean and you're living on the boat and not sailing, uh, it, it blocks uh, the way out uh, over over the stern because uh, you always have to go around the, the steering wheel. But um, if you if we take off the the center knot, the center nut of the steering wheel, it's um, two minutes of work to take it off and put yeah, it on and the side put it on, and or, or on the top on the to top the arc. Uh, yeah. Which uh, chart plotter do you have? Uh, we have a Raymarine, um, yeah, 
E7 or something like that. Uh -huh. So, um, is it enough no, nothing, for you? Nothing fancy. It's absolutely enough. It's uh, just as an option up here at the at the helm, uh, and uh, basically the the rest we do with uh, avionics and uh, on the on, on iPhone or uh, yeah on, on Generally, which uh, do do you use a, a chart plotter which pre-installed in your boat, or do you use a tablet or telephone when you as sail? The, as the main sort of navigation, mm -hmm. uh, we use a tablet. And phone. Oh, okay. So the chart plotter is uh, it connects all the system. The, the it brings all yeah, the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All information. Of, of yeah. Wind and uh, and the, the wind AIS, instruments uh, and that's it. Yeah, etc. Et yeah. yeah. Another one cool stuff. It is a big mainsail trawler. <laughs> <laughs> you like it, huh? <laughs> yes, I like it. Yeah, Let's that's a uh, that's a solid one. <laughs> How big sails do you have? Uh, we have um, the, uh, the the main sail is about 40 square meter, and um, the Genoa that we have on right now is uh, about the same size. Uh, so you have a 50/50. Exactly uh, of the distribution. Uh, we have um, a, a very big Genoa. Um, but uh, that, that is at home, uh, almost 65 square meter. Okay. Uh, but that is too much to handle with uh, two persons. You, you can get it up, but yep. the fun starts when you try to bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I know it is a many different options. So you can buy uh, a boat with a sail, which is a full in a mast, or in a boom, or lazy back, or without back. Which one do you prefer? So, um... Uh, <laughs> What we have is uh, without lazy bags. Um, Just with a full in a, a, a traditional, a traditional with a main for reefing. Right? Yeah, exactly. With a with a classical reefing, yeah, and then we have removable um, lazy jacks. Yeah. Uh, and we have a have a cover on that. Uh, but so you that you don't have a lazy lazy jacks. We you have know, lazy you have... jacks. Uh, you see, uh, they are on on the little hooks, uh, so they are not. Ah, okay. Not, I see. I see. Um, tapping against the mast and making noise. Uh huh. The exactly. bars like this is a more for racing. Yes, it is more for racing. Yeah, but uh, we 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 are not racing that much. Uh, and, so you're and, not uh, overloading it. Exactly, we're not overloading. And also from uh, from uh, what we saw before when we when we uh, uh, when we got the boat uh, and um, when I, when I investigated uh, on the previous owners before I bought it, then um, what I could find out is they also didn't use it for heavy racing. Uh, so I have, so I have not good trust. It, no. I, I have good trust in the rig. Yeah. What I duck and like in this boat? Look at him, and how he's standing <laughs> on. <laughs> it's it's one of the the, the great things in, uh, in this design. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, the, that the stays come down on the on the inside, and uh, well, one of the, the the nice things on the on the is uh, they they have. Um, Inside the boat, so the hull is very lightweight. Yeah. Uh, but uh, on the inside, at the bottom, they have a metal structure, which is the the backbone, and the mast is standing on the metal structure, and the and the uh, these are also connected to the metal structure, and that makes it very very stiff. And then the hull is just made around it, that no water enters. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that gives the advantage uh, that the stays come down uh, really on cool, the inside. Because in my boat, to get on a ball, I need to do it like this. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and here, here it the, the, just the, go. The, 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 the nice thing is you have the very wide uh, deck uh, for walking. Also, you have a lot of space here, uh, and you can easily uh, pass it. Uh, and, yeah, uh, easily go to the front. I see you have a baby stay. It is a form storm sail, or is it just no, uh, a regular just, baby stay? Just for uh, just for trimming. Uh, ah, okay. Just, uh, for trimming. So you have also regular fuller in a Genoa. Do you yeah. have a Genoa, or is this a Jeep? Uh, well, this is a hundred percent Genoa uh, or Jeep. Uh, Jeep so I yeah. think, um, yeah, and uh, we, uh, but there is a, a big Genoa uh, on on this boat. Probably nothing uh, you would uh, need in the Caribbean uh, or for uh, for yeah. ocean sailing because it's um, it's just too much, uh, yeah, sail area. Okay, which uh, windlass do you have? So I see you have an eight millimeter chain. 8 millimeter chain, we have a low friends windlass uh, and um, uh, one, hundred, 1 kilowatt or uh, it's 800? A one, 1 kilowatt 1 kilowatt, one kilowatt. okay that's, uh, that's uh, uh, quite sufficient one of the, the modifications we did, what you see here we don't have a, um, a spinnaker on, okay. uh, on this boat um, 
and uh, this is a, a Jenneker boom that I made myself with a removable uh, water stay. Uh -huh. uh, so, um, yeah, if, if we want to fly the Jenneker, we, we can use uh, that point because um, uh, these boats were built to be used with uh, spinnakers uh, as, as a proper racing boat. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Where do you keep your pool? Your pool. We, we don't have a spinnaker Ah, this is just you uh, it, use it for uh, a Jenneker. It, it, okay, uh, okay, it, okay. it never had the option uh, of, uh, of uh, spinnaker. Okay. Uh, and we now run it with a Jenneker because that is something you can do with two people. Spinnaker you can No, it is, uh, it is uh, easy, yeah. yeah. Let's... And uh, the boom that we have here, that is uh, just an uh, outhauler, uh, which we used uh, on the Atlantic. So it's a telescopic but Did you uh, use it for uh, Junica or did you use it for uh, Jeep? No, for the, for the Jeep. Uh, we just uh, had the main out on one yeah. side and then the Jeep like pulled butterfly. out on the other side. Like butterfly. Except, yeah, butterfly. Oh, okay. So let's maybe go inside. Yeah, let's do that. So let's go inside. So I see you have a quite sharp angle to get in. Yes. Yeah, it is. So it is. the best way to get inside. Mind your camera, you... mind your beer. <laughs> it's, uh, it's yeah, but it's, mind your beer. <laughs> but uh, it is. Uh, it's just four steps that disconnect the inside from the outside. Uh, uh -huh. the, so, um, yeah, sometimes it's some uh, climbing, um, especially when... If you run, yeah. 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 But on, on other boats, uh, what you see, it's um, especially when you have a center cockpit, uh, you have a, really, it's, it's a different floor. Yeah, and you yeah, it is. climb up one floor. And uh, Which engine do you have? Uh, we have a Volvo Penta, yep. um, D255 horsepower, mm -hmm. which is uh, of decent size, given our yeah, relatively decent long weight. light. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, so it is a main uh, cabin. <laughs> this is our main cabin, so this is where we have... Well, it's it's the middle of where we live. Okay, actually we live outside, but here is where we do all the navigation. So, so these are our storage spaces. So we yeah, have norm Normally, two. yes. <laughs> so usually... Those and this is the second one as well? Yes. So we have two cabins in the rear, but um, usually we use it as uh, storage spaces because we have... If you live in a boat, you normally to we have use it at least one for storage or two. Yes, but we are... Our boat is too small and we have too much stuff. So it we, is a... You, I cannot say that it is a too small boat. It is a normal size boat. Yeah, yours, I think yours is extremely spacious. I cannot uh, say that this area, yeah, it is a little bit bigger, but I have a 45. It is yeah, a 41, yeah. it is a relatively, I saw many boats, but this one, I cannot say it is a small boat, it's a big boat inside. Yeah. It is a much bigger inside than uh, you can guess from outside. We actually have heating. Uh, I mean, we used it in the Mediterranean last year. Yeah, but so. not in the Caribbean. No. <laughs> I mean, they say that you should switch it on like every two months or something like this, and then it's it's, it's really hard to switch on heating in the Caribbean. Yeah. But, but it's... what's the consumption of a diesel? Uh, just yeah. average. What's the consumption? Little, almost, it's almost not nothing. Much. So like even one if liter? we have uh, half a liter no. per hour, half liter? when we have it uh, in, in the winter in the in, in the in the Mediterranean, uh, running on full power, is almost nothing. Uh, where is the blower? Well, we have uh, one blower outlet down there. Yes. And then in each of the cabins is a is a blower outlet. Okay, it is a uh, like a water going or no no it's a, it's a is it? heat uh, is a uh, just hot air. Yes, uh, and um, it is a pipes which is with a hot pipes, air pipes going with uh, through the entire boat with hot air and uh, and uh, last year um, well I noticed uh, while well, still being in the Mediterranean and being in the winter on the boat I noticed that the uh, air in the front cabin yeah. isn't too hot yeah. anymore so uh -huh. I made the effort of insulating all of the uh, of the uh, tubes. Uh, and now we really get uh, also very hot air in the in the front part of the ship and uh, very good distribution of the hot air. Huh? Is it a big consumption of electricity? The the fan the fan. fan yeah, I'm talking just generally about so fan. So we have uh, six seven amperes uh, for the heating, which is not the heating itself; it's the fan of the heating. Yeah, the blower. So it is a quite uh, quite a lot. It is, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, you have a, is it a freezer or what is this? Well, that's uh, just a fridge, 
So, um, and as we just spent two weeks in Martinique, mm -hmm. it's really uh -huh. full. So this oh, it is oh, quite we have, big. We have a little freezer with some ice cubes. Uh -huh, I but see. basically, right now, the fridge is just full of cheese. But, it's just, but it, it is only one way to load it from the top. Yeah. yeah so if uh, but usually, it goes all the way down to the bottom. Yes, it goes. It goes all the way um, to the bottom and also like. Um, behind. Is it possible to get inside from a from a side or no? Only no. from the top. So this is one of the challenges I, we were talking about before. If you would like to have something in the fridge, usually it's just on the bottom and you have to take <laughs> everything out and just just to get it. And so in, in our boat uh, we have a side loading. It is more convenient. But really it is more convenient, but it consumes uh, significantly more energy because every time you open the door, all yes, the everything all air is going is flowing out, out for uh, sure. and then yeah. the uh, the fridge needs to cool down again. Yeah, so but in terms of energy efficiency, this is yes, much better. But uh, in a, uh, in our case. Uh, I cannot say that it is a, a lot of energy, it consumes a lot of energy, just moderate okay. A regular stall? Yeah? yeah, very, very normal, very basic, yeah. which moves okay. in the waves, so we have two, yes. three, two uh -huh. outlets of, of, of propane, so we use yeah. propane for cooking, and um, yeah, so usually, and we have an oven, of course we have an oven to make bread, yeah, it is a very cozy sofa, I see, but it, I, I think it's your office. This is my office, yes. So when I'm not on this um, table, I'm in my uh, music studio. So uh -huh. um, sometimes I just um, put all of the stuff in the front cabin because it's more quiet. Uh -huh. So we had, uh, some, we had some funny situations where I try to make a recording. I just put on the microphone and just wanted to make a recording and then there are dinghies passing by, yes. there are 30 yes, of yes. wind, <laughs> and today I forgot to switch off the VHF and there was someone calling someone like, oh no, because the recording was actually really good and then I had some guy on the VHF just behind me and it screwed it all up. <laughs> so um, recording on a sailboat is very challenging, and but I do it anyways. It just takes longer, like everything else takes longer on a boat. Uh, yeah. I'm not just because I'm recording video as well. <laughs> yeah. So, same, <laughs> Shut same up. Same situation. Same situation. Can you play something? Uh, yes, just I can. I can actually dun, dun, dun. play something like a little bit. So. Um... Um, which is actually called Roland Juno DS, which is a really good instrument. I can just create a whole orchestra. So you heard like bass, drums, some pet sounds, piano sounds. I can all combine it into one piece and can actually perform live. So it's all a lot of instruments just put into this little this little device, and then I just connect it to a laptop and record it. This is a microphone. Yes. Do you song? Do you sing song? No. I don't. Why do you use it? This is for karaoke. No, it's the reverse. <laughs> so no, I. This is a very, very, very basic microphone. It doesn't matter, but <laughs> probably you use it for somehow. I don't know. Yes, I, I use it. I use it for the voiceover for movies. So. Ah, okay, for voiceover. Yes. Okay. So do you do you have your YouTube channel? Yes, yes. This is this is our YouTube channel where everything lands on, like the movies oh, okay. about our journey, the music. Like everything into one channel. What's the name of your top channel? It's uh, Sailing Foxes. Where, where normally do you sleep? We sleep in the front cabin. I mean, what you can see here is well, we had laundry day today, so uh -huh. um, it's still a bit wet, and so as it gets dark outside and a bit colder, 
So um, we try to hang with some of the last t-shirts just like here. But it's enough space. Is it a good ventilation? Uh, yes, it's a perfect ventilation. Yeah. So with wind on anchor wind coming from the front, just open the hatch. Actually, front, really big front hatch is enough. So we get a really fresh breeze in our boat and it's really comfortable. Cool. Yeah. Ah, yeah, you have a manual toilet? Yes, that's our toilet. Okay. And, um, it's filled with a big bars. Nice. Yes, it's, uh, well, it's really big. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is a really big. I mean, for boats, it is really big and spacious. Yeah. And you can also hold on to to this rails and it's um, and the shower is the same place yeah it, yeah, it, it is a shower, same or place. rinsing water from a shower i mean yeah you can you can just take a shower by just taking uh -huh. it uh-huh okay nice yeah so. so guys we visited sailing foxes and uh i would like to say just have a cool life in the ocean, in the water, in the everywhere you want. And uh, you have a very cool and very reliable boat. And I think this boat could manage all your trip from around the world. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, do you think to travel around the world? Uh, this time not. Um, but maybe. So maybe maybe in a second journey. Uh, in a different boat? Or this um, one? We don't know. We don't know. But don't know. it is a cool plan. Yeah, it is. <laughs> of course, it, is. it always starts with a plan like this. Yes. Uh, we had uh, two years before our planned departure date, we took a little uh, piece of rope and made centimeter markers on it and every month we cut away one little piece of that rope yeah. uh, and in oh, that nice. way and that way uh, we always had and, and that rope was hanging in our apartment so we always knew okay that is our plan and that is the time left before the day zero <laughs> before we start uh, and uh, yeah so, so that is shaking probably, hands and there's a short <laughs> line uh, probably, exactly I so mean, probably we were so stressed out that actually we didn't cut the last month uh, we yes. just forgot it but uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> also for your, for, for your uh, for your um, well listeners or, or your followers uh, if, if they really want to have or really have that plan um, then uh, yeah Take, set yourself a date when you want to start. Yeah, and, you need a uh, timeline. You take a piece a of rope or, um, I don't know, you have uh, sometimes these paper centimeter uh, things uh, where you can cut off every month a centimeter. But by, that way, by the secret it is the application with the manage the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do it with an application, yeah. We, we thought the manual way... It is a modern way, life. The manual way, the manual I mean, way the piece is, of rope uh, looks nice. Yeah, the manual way is uh, much nicer. Put a male stone, like tight knot, you know. I mean, some people <laughs> Project put flowers management. in their apartment and yeah. they just have a little it is a piece so, of It is uh, offline software for project management. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, follow us. Follow my friend on uh, YouTube. And see you soon. Bye-bye!